Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, Reality TV Breakdown, where I review many different reality TV shows. If you're interested in Sister Wives, go to my main channel, where I have a lot of Sister Wives stuff and a lot of reviews there, and that is Senior Perspective. I'll put the link in the description below. But today, we are talking Vanderpump Rules. This is episode seven, let's review. So the Tahoe trip is over and Sa Tom Sandoval returns home and he's talking to his assistant who's in the kitchen cleaning up and doing things. And it's pretty benign. She said, you know, there were no fights. Everything was fine. And he's like, no, well, yeah, there were. And she's like, uh, he goes, but you know, it was fine. Like, and we resolve things and everything is good. All right. Cut to Sheena visiting Lisa at Villa Rosa, the palatial estate that she calls home. Sheena shares about the vast amount of tears she had while she was in Tahoe. She also shares how she is very frustrated with not finding it very easy to share her feelings with Ariana because Ariana wants her to just get over it and just forget Tom and Sheena's struggling with this because he was such a good friend to her for so long. And she understands that he was a good friend to Ariana too and they were in a relationship and they broke up, but like, does that mean she has to sever everything? She's just really struggling. She admits it'll never be the same because he hurt her bad, but she just sees glimpses of her old friend in him and then she doesn't know what to do. I don't know if I'm team Sheena on this one or not, quite frankly. I waffle. I go back and forth. Sometimes I agree with her and sometimes I think just cut it off altogether. I don't know. She refers to a time where she went to the airport to pick up Dan, Ariana's boyfriend. And in that trip back to dropping him off, she finds out that Ariana is going to be on Dancing with the Stars and she didn't know about it. And this is something that Sheena has always wanted. We mentioned in the previous episode, Lisa has a reaction at this point of like, oh, I remember you telling me when I did it, because Lisa Vanderpump was on Dancing with the Stars. I remember you telling me this is the number one thing you've always wanted to do. Sheena said, I guess she thought because of the Scandal situation, Sheena said that she's been taking dance lessons recently to prepare in the event she gets asked to be on Dancing with the Stars. And then Ariana got asked, who obviously in the Sandoval scandal is going to be the better person to have on the show. That doesn't, she'll get on there in the next couple of years. But you can tell in this situation that she's hurt by it. In the talking head, we had a very snarky comment from Sheena, which I did not appreciate. And that is, she said, Ariana has come a long way from being my backup dancer. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. This is going to cause a fight between the two of you when she watches this now. Mm-hmm. I will say when Ariana was her backup dancer, she was the better of the two backup dancers. She looked good. I don't know if she's ever taken dance in the past. I don't know. All these kids that worked in restaurants and are trying to act all took dance lessons because that's another opportunity to get on camera. Lisa tells Sheena, you're too much of a people pleaser. You have to stop doing that. And you have to come out and tell people you hurt my feelings and explain that to them. And Sheena's like, yeah, okay. But she did with Tom. She told Tom everything that she did. So it's not like she can't tell people you hurt my feelings. And I don't know if Ariana hurt her feelings. Sheena's just jealous. Ariana got an opportunity that she wanted. So I don't think she needs to tell Ariana you hurt my feelings. I mean, she does need to tell Ariana I'm struggling with you not understanding that you will always be my ride or die but I might have some peripheral relationship with Tom. I want you to understand that. I mean, that kind of thing she needs to say, but I don't, I don't think she needs to tell her she hurt her feelings. Hmm. I don't know. Let's move on. We have Ariana and Lala at a coffee shop. If this is how this entire season is going to be, where they're at a bar, at a restaurant, at a coffee shop, and they're just having these conversations at these different places, I'm going to pull my hair out. Because already the season is sort of wah, wah, wah. And this episode is falling in suit. <clears throat> Thank God for the Seeking Sister Wife show that's on, because that is juicy good. 
So, okay, we have Ariana and Lala at a coffee shop. Ariana thinks she never gets mad. So this photo shoot she took where she had to smash some things was very cathartic. Meanwhile, Bravo goes and clips to all the times that she was really mad and screaming. (laughs) But the reality is almost all those clips were her yelling at Tom deservedly. And most of them were like post he's sleeping with one of my best friends. So it is true. I thought was a little backhanded of Bravo or whatever the production company is that they use for editing it that way because Ariana doesn't really yell at people. She doesn't. Out of this group, she probably yells the least. At this coffee shop get together, Lala does call out Ariana for not coming to Sheena's defense when Sheena got all that backlash online for being in that photo that we talked about in the last episode. Ariana used some sort of lame excuse like, oh, I'm not going to comment on it or say something that's going to be then reposted by other people and give fuel to any of this. That's a reason to not have your friends back and to let her die on the sword over this relationship with your ex-boyfriend. Like she's taking one for the team here. She's been taking one for the team and been team Ariana this entire time. And for Ariana to not say, listen, Sheena has my back. They just happen to be filming or for Ariana to at least text Sheena and say, please explain this picture. She never did. Well, she didn't up to the point that the cameras were showing her that day. Maybe later she did. But she never posted something on social media to say, this is BS, leave Sheena alone. She's got my back. So Ariana says, I'm not going to do that. And Lala comes back and says, not even for your friend? Ooh, yes. Lala and the zingers. The voice of reason, I can't believe I'm saying it. That's right. Even for your friend? Step outside yourself, Ariana. This is now not all about you. Think about somebody from their perspective. I wrote in my notes here that this whole conversation is frustrating. It's going back and forth. Ariana needs to do what's best for her in all of her talking. She can't see Sheena's position on this. Lala's trying to be the voice of reason. It's not working. Ariana's being very egocentric. And this whole conversation is not a good look for Ariana. All right, we cut now to all of them going out to dinner later in the evening. We have Katie, Lala, Sheena, and that other chick. I don't know her name. I have a blank. Katie plus blank plus Lala plus Sheena. I don't, I still don't know. What is that girl's name? She's like watching paint dry. She has zero personality and She's been in episodes in the past, but clearly was never taken on as a cast member because there's nothing exciting about her and she contributes nothing to a conversation. She's nameless. I'm just going to call her that chick because I don't know her name. So they're all out. Actually, it wasn't dinner. I think they all went out for lunch. They're trying to catch up with each other's lives. Sheena said that her daughter just broke her arm. She got a pink cast on it. Summer Moon chose pink before Sheena had an opportunity to say that's not going to go with anything in your wardrobe, which I find hard to believe. There's got to be a ton of pink in her wardrobe. Anyway, it was a funny line anyway. So Hollywood, right? Your daughter broke her arm and is in the hospital trying to get it fixed. And the mother's concerned about what color the cast is going to be in terms of matching with the wardrobe. I hope the whole thing was just a setup joke because if any of that is true, it's disgusting. I do think, though, the fact that she broke her arm and Sheena was there and somebody else was there, like, it's just a random thing, you know? Things happen. And so I think it might be good for Sheena to see, I can't prevent everything from happening. I can't be in control of everything. I was right there, my daughter sitting on the edge of the couch, and boom, she fell over, fell the wrong way, broke her arm. And life goes on. I hope this isn't a setback for her. It didn't appear to be as she's sharing it. I hope it's something to say, things are going to happen. You have to just let go. We'll see. We'll see the manifestations of it going forward. I think it's the no-name girl. I didn't write down here, but somebody says they discuss why Ariana stayed with Tom if it's in a bad relationship. Why did she stay with Tom when it was a bad relationship? I don't remember how it really got there, but... Sheena basically says, because you can't judge somebody unless you're in their situation. And Lala chimed in and said the same thing too. Like, it's not ours to judge. Like, I've been in situations that I'm sure other people are like, why don't you get out? Like, unless you're in it, it's easy from the outside looking in to say, fix it, right? Sheena goes on to say, yeah, look at the situation with Jax and Brittany. Jax, in this long-term, many-year relationship with Brittany, 
getting to the point they're thinking about proposing, goes in and has an affair. Brittany's all upset about it. That was a whole rotten hell line that she said. And eventually forgives him and comes back to him and then he proposes and she accepts. So now, apparently the rumor on the street is that Jax is sleeping around again. Mm Mm-hmm. The two of them went, had a baby, and now what? I don't know if that other show is showing all this or not. I haven't started watching it. The Valley? Um, I'm not sure if I'm interested in watching it or not. I don't know. Just There's only so many hours in a week. <laughs> we'll see. Lala says there are still rumors, lots of rumors, about him around town. And Katie kind of turns the conversation and says, well, I just can't understand, Sheena, why you want to be friends with him. All right. We have a classic scene that's in every episode of every season of Katie trying to pick a fight with Sheena again. This time it's about her, I guess, majorly defending Ariana, even though Ariana and Sheena are really good friends and have been for all these years. And Katie wasn't part of that friendship. But now Katie and her have this restaurant. And because Katie has always hated Tom, which is partly why she never got along with Ariana, because Ariana was dating Tom. So now she's like, hate Tom even more now. I'll be friends with you, Ariana, because you hate him too. And she just hates Sheena because she's always hated Sheena. Katie just has this whole line and she just insists that nobody should ever like Tom because she doesn't. Like she's just upset because she kept going back to like, well, this is what he did to me and this is what he did to me. How can you be friends with him? Like, let's try. I think that's very unfair to ask. Guys, Why? You have to forgiven because it's not crazy. you, baby. Well, I'm just saying I'm not hanging on to 12 that's years you. ago. That's you. Yeah, I just don't have any sympathy and I'm really waiting for this conversation to be over. Anyone that does me wrong, you can never be friends with again. It's all about Katie. Katie might be the narcissist in all of this, really, if we really analyze it. I don't see a whole lot of altruism in her. I don't see a whole lot of putting other people first. I don't. It's all about her. Always. Always. Maybe that'll change this season. Let's watch and see. So Lala chimes in and she tries to correct Katie in this situation. Again, Lala being the voice of reason. And then people are just over it at this point. So Lala's like, let's just change the subject, can we? Let's talk about something lighter and something happy. Let's talk about something fun. I got a good one for you. I slept with a bartender. (laughs) Recently? No. (laughs) Recently. And then Sheena says... Okay, I dated the bartender. (laughs) No, I don't think she said she dated. I think she said, I slept with the bartender. That's even better. (laughs) So funny. And they're like, oh, and then Lala's like, recently? And she's like, no, not recently. I'm married now. But I just want to say, back in the day, slept with that guy. So they're laughing about it and all that. And then Katie just inserts herself and goes right back to complaining about what she was complaining about before. Recently. This was like literally 2006. <laughs> Glad I left the house for this conversation. Don't understand it. What don't you understand? No, we're not talking about There's anything. nothing I'm, to I'm literally gonna, I'm literally gonna jump person. off the street if we have to keep talking about Tom Sandoval. We're not talking about him anymore. We've all moved on to the bartender that she <laughs> in 06. With all due respect, I simply wish she would get over it. I wrote, Katie is such a sad and angry person. I don't get it and I don't like her. Not at all. She's just miserable. She's miserable. She's got to be miserable to be around. She's miserable to watch on television. She is just always miserable. I'll put a clip in here to show you. Like, I, you wouldn't, if you scripted it, you wouldn't believe it. Like, she just likes to fuss and complain and be miserable. And as soon as Lala is like, let's do something lighter. And then something funny happens and they're light and they're laughing about it. Katie comes back in and complains again about what they were talking about before. It's, you, you can't even script it. We now have Lisa meeting with Tom Sandoval. She asks if he's heard from Raquel. He said he hasn't heard anything yet. She admits that she has spoken to Raquel at length and that Raquel is not happy with Tom. In the talking head, Tom says um, 
the last conversation that they had was an argument and it was because Raquel said most people in this facility tend to extend and stay a little bit longer and she's feeling like she needs to do that and he was completely opposed and he said the longer that she stays or the harder it's going to be to face everybody when she gets out and she has to face them eventually anyway so he completely disagreed with what the people said there at the facility and what she's feeling and that was the last time she spoke to him. What a narcissistic thing to say, right? I know better than all the doctors and the professionals in that treatment center. Classic narcissism, classic. Lisa tells Tom, just reach out to Raquel and talk to her. And he said, I can't because she's blocked me. And let's seem shocked. She's like, she blocked you? And then right away, Lisa says, it's over, Tom. It's over you and your little kid, three to five-year-old, necklace of candy and plastic (laughs) toys or something that you're wearing and your painted fingernails you look so dumb I don't know what he's trying to compensate for but like his attire is so bizarre I think he thinks he looks cool (laughs) I think he does all right Lisa knows the truth in this whole relationship between Raquel and Tom, and Tom does not know the truth. He does not understand it. He does not know what's going on. Lisa can see the writing on the wall, and she's like, it's over. We cut to Lisa now showing up in Lala's office where she's rebranding herself because the name Give Them Lala, well, she had to get rid of the name Give Them Lala anyway because she developed it and all that with Randall and part of the whole divorce and trying to separate monies and and. IP or whatever I think she needs to get rid of the the title give them Lala and she admits that it's a good time to do it because when she came up with the term give them Lala she was all about herself and she felt like everybody needed to receive some of Lala and she has said I've grown up now and I know that that's not the truth and so a new name will go with me I think it's perfect it's perfect for her I'm sorry the lighting keeps changing on this It's just as it's reading it. And every now and then when my hand goes in front of the camera, it thinks it's darker. I don't know. I can't control it. I've tried to fix it. I'm sorry. It's my fault for talking with my hands so much. I'll I'll stop. I try to like sit on them a lot of times. You see my arms are sometimes down. I try to sit on them. So now during this conversation, Lala reveals that she wants a sperm donor, which we know cut to real time. She's actually pregnant right now from her sperm donor, but she's saying to Lisa this is something she wants and Lisa of course is very traditional and she's like can't you just find a man (laughs) but Lala points out of course there's plenty of men who are willing to sleep with me I don't want a baby daddy I don't want to deal with anybody who might possibly have any rights on this child or claim to this child she said and she starts crying and I felt for her she struggles with having to give up ocean part-time to Randall I would too. I remember thinking if I ever, when my kids were small, seeing like trade-offs in a McDonald's once just brought me to tears and they all were fine about it. But just knowing that that was going down, knowing that I would have to give up my children to somebody who I didn't love or didn't trust or didn't want to be in a relationship with anymore, but I would have to give them my children would be heart-wrenching for me so I can only imagine what she's going through always having to give a a certain amount of time ocean over to Randall who she doesn't like or trust so she wants a baby that's all hers I mean it's not the way I would go about it honestly but I understand I mean I guess she just really thinks she's not going to find love like a true love relationship again well it might not be true because she did say I want to have lots of kids So I have Ocean, I'll have one with a sperm donor, maybe I get married someday and I have a baby with them, and I'd love to adopt a child as well. So a little bit of this and a little bit of that. (laughs) So she is open to having a child with a man if she does find the love of her life. And I think she just wants to start it now. I don't think she said it. She's like, Ocean is X years old and she doesn't want to have too big a gap. She wants to have another child. So she took it into her own hands and she went to a sperm donor and she did get another child in this conversation between Lala and Lisa Lala reveals about her conversation that she had with Ariana in terms of telling Ariana listen you did not have your friends back Sheena's back and since that conversation Ariana has gone online and posted something in support of Sheena 
We cut to a scene with Schwartz and Joe. Joe is that weird chick that was the hairdresser that's been kind of last season and this season popping in and out of scenes with Schwartz. And their conversation walking down the sidewalk was, if a spider could talk, what would it sound like? I just feel like this is exactly something my kids would say when they were around like fourth grade, third, fourth grade. Like, but you know what? Schwartz's maturity level could be about third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, maybe. So they might be a perfect match. She drives me absolutely insane, but they might end up being a perfect match. I just, it, it breaks my heart because I love Schwartz a lot. Don't like Joe. They get together for dinner or drinks or something with Allie and James. They start talking about Sandoval. This is Joe's reaction. The towel was a great success. We had some mini breakthroughs. Did you and Sandoval get along? I will be honest and say part of me was like, like, dude, like stoked to see him, I guess. Like, Aww. just like stoked to see us three, yeah. the band back. Yeah. Talk about an over-exaggeration. It's just annoying. Allie's very uncomfortable during this whole conversation because she doesn't like Sandoval. She definitely has Ariana's back. And she's never known Sandoval. She's never had a relationship or a friendship with Sandoval. So it's very easy for Allie to just be like, Ariana is a friend of mine. I don't like Sandoval. It's very clear cut for her. So she doesn't like the fact that Joe is defensive of Sandoval. And then all of a sudden, Allie looks over and she's like, is that Tom Sandoval right over there? Well, magically, he's appeared because the cameras were there. This is after the conversation he had with Lisa. A few, I don't remember if he was at Tom Tom maybe when he had the conversation with Lisa. So he walks down. I think they're in Sur right now. And he joins them. So they're there for a few minutes and randomly out of the blue Tom Sandoval hands a pair of sunglasses to James and says hey James these I think would look really good on you try them on so James puts them on I think they look douchey myself but whatever they're probably some expensive designer glasses it's so funny what people will wear just because it has a designer label and they will completely throw taste and everything out the window <laughs> completely so he's like, yeah, do I look good? And people are like, yeah. And so Tom Sandoval says, keep them, keep them. This is so Tom Sandoval. He has always bought friendships with people. He has a level of insecurity that he can't just have a friend and believe maybe that a friend would want to be friends with him. But this isn't something new. And <laughs> actually, James even said, I still have everything you've always given me. I haven't gotten rid of it. I have a whole collection of things from Tom Sandoval. <laughs> It's, it's odd. I wish I had a friend like that. I'd love to have a friend that just kept sure. No, I don't think I would. I'm not a good gift receiver. I would feel uncomfortable. And then I would feel like I have to give something back. And, and I, I don't, I, you know, it's very hard for me to just say thank you and accept it and not feel like, okay, now I need to do something to not pay him back, but you know, like it's the right thing to do, I guess. I don't know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do well with a friend like Sandoval who kept showing me with gifts. Unless it was a friend that was like a multimillionaire and I'm clearly not. And so they just kept giving me gifts and they kept saying, I don't want anything back. Don't you ever give me anything back. And then every now and then I can like make a, a loaf of banana bread or something and give it to them. <laughs> that's, that's the friend I need. Where am I going to find that friend? Where is that friend? I need that friend in my life. Okay. We cut to a scene where now Schwartz and Joe are just out together and they're talking and it is revealed during this conversation that they have been intimate in the past even though they keep denying it but like I mean we're not idiots she spent many nights at his place right after the divorce with Katie and apparently the last time they were intimate was just one month ago so it's kind of still going on I will say if this means Joe's going to be on the show more I'm not happy about it on the flip side, it might make for good TV because there's always, it's always fun to have the villain. And Sandoval's been the villain for so long. <laughs> like, it's almost getting old. Not that I don't want him to, like, stay there, but, like, we could use some fresh blood. Allie has all the girls over for a reading. Allie and her reading. You know, I'm not a big fan of this. I don't know. I don't buy it. But anyway, it's fine. And then Brock, Tom Tom, and James, they all go out for a guy's night, a dinner, which I thought was really funny. They go to like some barbecue, like a Brazilian barbecue kind of place. And they're dressed to the nines, like not only suits, but like 
Tom Sandoval comes in a tux, like they're so dressed up. And you look at the people sitting behind them and there's a guy in a t-shirt and a baseball trucker hat. <laughs> they didn't need to. They, I guess, tried to make the place seem a little swankier than it really was. Allie goes ahead and she apparently did the charts for all the girls and says that Ariana is going forward, is going to have luck and wealth. Okay. Sheena needs to put herself first. Again, these are all things from just watching the show. <laughs> but okay. These are not pearls of wisdom that she's sharing. Okay. Lala's was just a bunch of gibberish and moons and stars and things that made no sense to me. So they must have cut out anything important. And Katie's convinced this is not her first life. I don't think that was it. I think this is something Katie volunteered. Katie has, she said she has very manly energy and, and aggressive energy. I'm like, okay, I can see that. And she said that this is not her first life. In her previous lives, she was always a man. And that's why she has such an manly energy and aggressive energy now. She just has downer, depressing, mean, negative energy. I don't really see her as aggressive and manly. I just see her as being depressing and not happy. There's no joy. No joy. You cannot use the word joy and put it together with Katie. We cut back to the boys' night and Tom Sandoval is sharing with the guys how he just met with Lisa and what she said about Raquel and he said, I don't know, I guess I have to start dating again, but it's been 15 years since I was single and dating around. Eh. No. 15 years since you were technically single, but you were dating around. It's been a year of dating around. He had a seven-month relationship with Raquel, and then she's been in treatment for a few months. And do we really think that he was being faithful to her while she was in treatment? I don't know. You tell me, what do you think? Tom Sandoval says, I don't want another relationship. I just want female energy in my life. <laughs> okay. He just wants somebody to F and he wants no commitment. And you're just the douche we always thought you were, Tom Sandoval. But thank you for confirming it. I just want female energy in my life. I don't want another relationship. I just want to sleep around. What's wrong with that? Got nothing. Thank you for just coming out and saying it. You're as douchey as we always thought you were, Tom Sandoval. But I will say, the idea of him not having a commitment to somebody is probably a really good idea. Girls night, Lala comes out and says, you know that the guys having their guys night, they're all going to be bonded after this, which was triggering to Ariana then because Tom Sandoval is there at the guys night. Ariana says, why wouldn't James respect himself enough to say, I'm good, I'll go hang out with my other friends? First of all, we don't even know what other friends. James has come out and admitted he doesn't really have any friends other than this group. And Tom Sandoval was really his only true friend in the group, which is why this was so devastating to him. So there aren't other friends for him to hang out with. So Ariana doesn't understand why he doesn't just say, oh, I'm not going to hang out with you. I'm going to go hang out with my other friends. Now, she doesn't critique Brock for being there, which I found interesting, but okay, it is what it is. Lala says to Ariana, it's just because guys are different. And Ariana says, well, that's sad for guys. <laughs> well, I guess. Or is it? Like they just let everything brush off and they move on and they don't dwell in it and have all these feelings and anger and resentment and everything. Like, I think it's good for guys. I mean, quite frankly, I don't agree with it, but I think that they just let things go and, and they're much lighter in life than us girls are. Oh, but it gets worse. I wrote down that Ariana is continuing to defend herself. It, she is starting to loosen up a little bit. She's not as militant about people not looking at or talking to Tom Sandoval. And Lala asks her, why are you so concerned about what other people do? Now, Lala knows firsthand this whole thing because she dealt with it with Randall, right? And her and Randall broke up and she told everybody, I'm cutting you out of my life. The same thing Ariana did. I cut you out of my life if you have a relationship or you talk to that man. So she understands where Ariana is coming from, but Lala has moved beyond that. So I think she's trying to help Ariana get to that place too, where she cannot hold so much anger and animosity inside of her. And Katie chimes in, I guess, trying to defend Ariana. But again, she just comes across as unlikable and annoying. <laughs> That's what I wrote. And Sheena is silent through all of this. 
Ellie chimes in with as the voice of reason. She said that everyone is reacting differently or something like that because they all have different moons or something like that. I like, uh, what? <laughs> and then she adds this gem. Honestly, I'm going to say one thing. The point of astrology is to really explain how we're all different. We all know how Lala communicates and how you communicate and how you communicate and we're all meant to be different. It's just like universal love. Like we can all just get along if you just understand people's birth charts. It's just like universal love. Like we can all just get along if you just understand people's birth charts. Or just maybe, Allie, everyone reacts differently because we're all made differently. We're all different creatures. We Nobody is identical. We all have different experiences that we grew up with. We all have different thoughts, feelings. We are created differently. We have different minds. We have different emotions. That's why we all react differently. It's not because of our moons. But okay. She's so young and naive. I don't know if I like her or not. I think I do. Her ignorance is bliss, I suppose. And then that's the end of the episode. They show the mid-season trailer for what's going to happen the rest of the season. I guess we're halfway through. It must be about 14 episodes because I think we're at epi this was episode seven. And it does look like it gets better. Thank goodness, because I haven't been enjoying doing these reviews. I'm sorry. But I hope you enjoy them. I really do, because that'll make it worthwhile since I'm not enjoying doing them, because I'm just finding it not a great season. So let me know what you think. Tell me your thoughts on all of this, and I will be back with a review of episode eight next week. Bye, everybody. Like, subscribe, and comment below. Appreciate you. Bye.